no matter the location. From OAKLA to LV, I'm a Raider. This Raiders mailbag is presented by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash Raiders so you guys can save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. When I tell you all to go try these products, I mean it. The Lawnmower 3.0, the Ball Toner. They even have ball wipes now in case you get sweaty down there. There's no more excuses. If you walk by somebody and you smell some Fumunda cheese, it's their problem. Tell them to go to manscaped.com slash Raiders. If you don't know what Fumunda cheese is, Google. It's a hell of a thing. All right, we got Alejandro. You're first up here, my man. Draft linebacker from Notre Dame. So Jeremiah Osa Cormora. Sorry, you don't have to spell it. And a second round. Use it for a safety. Resign Aguilar. Sign Leonard Williams and a cornerback. If the Raiders could pull off all those things, man, I'm, I'm with you. I think it would be an absolutely phenomenal offseason. All right, Daniel, what you got for me? Should the Raiders pursue Kyle Van Noy since the Dolphins are cutting him? So I did want to walk you guys through the latest around Van Noy and if the Raiders should sign him. So Van Noy technically hasn't been cut yet, and I am filming this on Tuesday, so just FYI. But he will not return to the Miami Dolphins. That means his time in Miami, it's done. But originally, they thought, like, oh, wow, they're just going to let him go, cut him. He's never going to come back. Well, now new reports out there from me and Rappaport and said they're going to try to trade him first. So I don't really know why they did this the way they did it because if you know that he's just going to get cut, why would a team go out and trade for him? He's still a good player. It's a pretty surprising move, honestly, because he signed a four-year deal worth $51 million, $30 million of which was guaranteed. So if you guys want kind of a crazy stat, this past season he basically made like 625 k per solo tackle. Like, it's, it's a lot of money. 69 tackles is nice, but he's also a very dynamic all-around player, a player that I actually wanted the Raiders to go out and get because he can play in a 4-3, can play in a 3-4. I don't know how well he would fit in a Gus Bradley type of system, but if you are looking for another player who can play a lot of different roles for you, Kyle Van Noy is pretty interesting. So should the Raiders go out and sign Van Noy, type S for sign, or what should the type P for pass? If they were going to invest in a lot of money, I'd rather the Raiders try to honestly go out and get a guy like I mean, Shaq Barrett's going to cost a lot more than Kyle Vanoy. There's no doubt about that. But um, maybe some other top edge rushers out there. But I still would rather have a Leonard Williams. I'd still rather have, honestly, like a, a Dalvin Tomlinson. I'd rather go out and get a guy like Marcus Williams. So type S for sign or type P for pass. Armor King 09110. If we kept Joyner, we shouldn't. Shouldn't we put him at free safety where he belongs? I'm just, why would I pay 8.7 million, or why would I pay Joyner 11.2 million dollars when he hasn't been good? Save 8.7, give it to another player, like, no, I'm not, I'm just not going to keep Joyner. Bryce, you're next up here, man. Go after Levanta Davis. I mean, Levanta Davis has proven to me that he's one of the best linebackers probably the last 10, 20 years. You're going to have to pay him, though, probably 13 million dollars a year. He's 31 years old, I believe. So three-year contract, I believe, is what he's looking for, for like 13 mil. I love Levanta David. He could fit in almost any de defensive scheme that he wants. But if you could tell me which linebacker would I rather us get, David or Shaq Barrett, I would rather go get Shaq Barrett because it fills a bigger need for us. So if i got to pick between David and Barrett, I'm actually going to go Barrett. Chris Smith, you're next up here on the Raiders Report. What's up, my dude? Let's wish my Uncle Tommy – wait, my Uncle Timmy – a happy birthday. He's a Raiders fan since the 70s. All right, everyone, HBD in the comments section. Shout out to Uncle Timmy. Happy birthday. All right, Hank Moore, you're next up here. Who is the better, who who was the better cancer and would have made a bigger impact when healthy, AB or TB? Um, I'll let you all decide, but I'm always team FAB, and at this point I'm FTB. All right, if you guys want to join the shows all, all the time, you guys can do it. Hit the big red button that says subscribe. We also go live every single Tuesday. 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. So no excuses. Don't miss the shows and turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss a show. That's how you get your mailbags featured. Your questions featured on the mailbag, I guess I should say. All right, we got I pour milk before cereal. You're just a crazy human being. Would you be mad if we drafted Jalen Phillips in the first? I wouldn't be mad because Jalen Phillips to me is a good player. Like he has the tools and he'd be a good edge rusher. What scares me though is... His medical. I mean, this is a guy who he considered retiring back in 2019. He used to play at UCLA, considered retiring because of all these concussions. Then in 2020, had a pretty solid year with Miami where he actually proved to probably be the best true edge rusher, true defensive end, 4-3 type of guy. He's a very talented player, five-star recruit. But 
it, it is a little bit of a gamble, and I don't really like taking gambles in the first round. Latoya, 6-7. Mitch, did you see the Raiders just extended Kendall Vickers? Yes, yes, I did. So, again, this is being filmed on Tuesday. Vickers uh, posted on Twitter. Uh, let's run it back. So Vickers has been a player that I know has been working uh, very, very hard. He's a player that I was pretty impressed by when he was given opportunities this year by the Raiders. So you're adding more defensive line depth, but this really doesn't take away from the idea that the Raiders still need to be able to go out and add a lot of players on the D-line. Question coming in from Danny7 Raider. Mitch, who do we take on pick 18? Well, luckily for you, Raiders have picked 17. The Dolphins have picked 18. But if you want to know who I think the Raiders could take at 17, my top four guys are probably Jeremiah Wosukoromora. Christian Barmore is definitely up there. Um, I'm going to go with a guy. I'm starting to really starting to like Aziz Ojolari a lot. Joseph Asai is a player to keep in mind. Quiddy Pay, Gregory Russo, some other guys to keep in mind there as well. But if you want to go check out a video that I made, my top 10 players that I would draft at 17, I probably have to update it, but at least some names to keep in mind. Now, if you want your girlfriend to keep your name in mind or maybe just keep your girlfriend, go ahead and get the perfect package at Manscaped. Lawnmower is the best way to keep your downstairs nice and clean. So the Lawnmower 3.0, it gives you an extra inch or two. I'm just going to be 100% honest with you. Not that I'm a guy from experience. Oh, wait, I am a guy with an experience. Use this product every single day. So imagine if you use it and you're cleaner down there, it looks bigger. I'm just being honest with you. Like, it, it, instead of giving yourself like a fake inch, you can actually give yourself an inch. Go to manscaped.com, Raiders, 20% off, free shipping, and these boxers and traveling kit, they're free. And they're the most comfortable boxers ever wear. Do I have them on? I do. Nope, I can't show it. Camera's not high enough. I promise you, though, four Chucky heads, I have the Manscaped boxers on. Get the perfect package, 20% off, and free shipping. If you guys go ahead and get the deal, you can always hit me up on IG, too. I always share on IG when people get the products because I'm always curious what you guys have to say about them. And really, haven't heard any bad yet. Let's go to Matthew. What's up, my dude? Mitch, do you have faith Gruden can make this a consistent playoff team? Honestly, I, I don't know. Um, I want to be able to sit here and say, yes, I 100% do. But until we start seeing some improvements in free agency or start seeing some improvements in the players we draft, I can't honestly sit here and say that, yes, I have confidence. Plus, I think Gruden is a great head coach. He's a great leader. But he, he needs to be able to learn to swallow some pride and give up some of the offensive play calling. Like, I would have fired Greg Olson. I would have been trying to bring in a younger, more enthusiastic play caller who could bring some freshness to this offense. Am I hoping that Gruden can you know, really turn it around? Yes, I do. But until he starts hitting on some of these players in free agency in the draft, I can't honestly look and say, yes, I'm confident to be a consistent playoff team. Eduardo Ruiz, Mitch, signed Sue, moved Cleve Furl inside, and drafted a defensive end. I'm all about dra drafting some defensive ends. The issue with Indomitian Sue is, yes, he's been a very consistent player. He's also in my top 10 players to draft, or to sign at the defensive tackle position. He's getting up there in age. Sure, he's never, I think he's only missed two games his entire career. But I'm not going to move Klee inside if I'm going to have Indomic and Sue. Like, you put Sue on the inside. You try to also add probably another defensive tackle where you bring back Jonathan Hankins. I want Klee to be able to play some inside, but also play more on the outside because that's really built. That's really where he's built to play. But Klee is one of the most underrated defensive ends, defensive tackles, defensive linemen in the league. He was the best defensive player on that line for this year for the Raiders, and I actually don't think it was close. Let's go to the drip here. Should we go after Jarrell Casey? Jarrell Casey was let go by the Denver Broncos. I believe he was able to play in, what, only, what, three games this year, Sam? Sam? Tours bicep, so I get the, the fact that he knows the AFC West, but he was a lot better with the Titans. I got to see if he's healthy or not. If he's healthy, sure, he's a great player, but until I get a full medical check, I can't sit here and say that. Let's go to Hugo Gomez on Instagram. Should the Raiders consider bringing back Marshawn Lynch? Hugo, appreciate the question. I'm going to say no. I get the idea of falling in love with past players. But if you're going to bring in a veteran running back, it's not going to be Marshawn. It's not going to be Beast Mode, even though as much as I would love to see him back in silver and black, it's just not going to happen. It doesn't make sense. If you're going to bring in a veteran running back, I'd rather have Mark Ingram. I'd rather have Adrian Peterson. But I'll ask you guys, why for yes and for no, should the Raiders bring back Marshawn Lynch? Curious what you guys have to say on this one. 
If you're watching this live, we got 396 likes. If you love Marshawn, like the video, and I know a lot of y'all do. I'm a big Marshawn fan, but I am going to be typing my N for no. I'm not going to be bringing him in for over a million. Bryce, what's up, my dude? This will not happen, but what will we have to trade for Jamal Adams? Probably two first-round picks because that's what Seattle gave up for Jamal. And trading for Jamal doesn't make any sense. All right, Jack, what's up, dude? If one of the top two wide receivers fall to pick 17, who would you take, or would you take one or go defense? We all know the Raiders need defense. So you're talking about Jamar Chase and Devonta Smith. I'd still try to take defense, but I actually think then if that's the case, a team would try to trade up with the Raiders, and then you just trade down. I mean, there's just no way. I mean, even Jalen Wall. Jalen Wall is a phenomenal athlete as well. I don't see those three guys falling down to pick 17. So if if if, if Smith and if Jamar Chase are still available after the top 10, I'll be shocked. Next one's coming in from Jekyll. Hopefully I got that right. It seemed like you're new to the channel. I don't recognize this name. If the Raiders end up trading Mariota, who takes his place? That is a great question, my dude. I mean, I know Peterman, they already brought him back, but I don't want Nathan Peterman to be the main backup quarterback to the Raiders. I mean, that, that'd be scary. He's meant to be a player coach, and he's meant to be somebody that they could potentially use in practice to fill a lot of different roles. Um, but I don't see the Raiders spending more than $5 million on a backup quarterback. The greatness of the Raiders. Next question up here. Why not draft Paulson to Debo and get Richard Sherman a free agency, the Stanford connection? So I actually think it's funny. I like the Paulson to Debo connection. He was a player that I talked about last year on the Raiders report where I said, don't be surprised if this is a guy on the Raiders' radar. He's long. He's lanky. He's actually like a lesser version of Richard Sherman, if you will. Both very intelligent players. Both kind of play the exact same style. Debo gets burnt a lot more, which is something that definitely hurt him a little bit. But he was also a player that was mocked to the Raiders by Mel Kuyper Jr. in the first round last year. Decided to opt out, decided not to play. So uh, we'll see what ultimately ends up happening. But uh, definitely a player that I think the Raiders should target in round four. Now, if you guys haven't already, please hit me up. IG, Mitchell Renton 365 Always answering your questions. I get that people can't always join me for my live shows. But I promise you, I take about an hour of my day, literally, every single day, and I answer the DM. So I'll get to a lot of the questions later tonight, over the weekend, and if I don't answer it, keep sending me the messages. I promise you, I promise you, I will get to them. Raider Nation Trich, what is up, my man? Should we trade back in the first round and get an extra pick and still get a good defensive player? Yes. I've said it once, I've said it twice, maybe I've said it 100 times probably in the last two weeks. If you can trade down for the Raiders, you do it. Let's go to Maximo 527. Do you see Micah Parsons falling to 17, and if not, would you trade up to 13 to draft him if he's still on the board? No. I, this, so this is actually the player I was talking about before. I'm not trading up for Micah Parsons. I saw somebody write about it, and if you see people saying, hey, the Raiders should trade up for Micah Parsons, no disrespect to uh, the man that wrote it. I just don't think that that's a very intelligent thought. There's like 15 NFL teams that have already come out and said that they're not going to draft Parsons because of his off-the-field stuff. He's got some pretty shocking stuff. I'm a Penn State guy. I watch Parsons a lot. Very talented. If you're going to use him, you use him as like an edge rusher, not as a middle linebacker. So do I think he could fall to 17? Yes, I absolutely do. Do you think it's worth trading up for him? No, I absolutely don't. All right, Hugo Gomez. If we want a vet running back instead of going out for Ingram or AP, long shot, why not try to get Beast Mode back for a year? Hugo, sorry, man. I uh, actually took your question off Instagram, and I already answered it. So now it looks like you're here on YouTube. You're asking it again. It's all good. We appreciate you. All right, we got a super chat coming in from Brian Dar. Get Mac to hear song, Return of Mac. <laughs> I unfortunately don't know this song. So get Mac to hear song, Return of the Mac. If uh, if it gets him back in silver and black for less than a first-round pick, I'm, I'm all for it. All right, we got Dale Webb Jr. What's up, my man? Yannick Ngakwe or Ryan Kerrigan? If I got to pick, I'm taking Yannick Ngakwe. Younger player. Probably a little bit more versatile than Ryan Kerrigan. Kerrigan might be the better, like, edge rusher, if you will, but if money doesn't matter, it's Yannick Ngakwe, 26 years old. I believe he's got, like, 37 and a half sacks his first four years in the league. So, young, talented player. I'm going to go get Yannick. Damian Franco, what's up? Should we try to go after Quan if he hits the free agency market? So I actually think that Quan is going to end up getting released by the Saints because they don't have a lot of money. I believe the Saints then could save it's like $12 million, if you will. The issue with Quan is can he stay healthy? I, I don't know if Quan can stay healthy, and he's not gonna he's probably not gonna take a contract for less than like seven or eight million dollars. So 
There's other linebackers out there that I personally like that might even be a better fit, but Quan's a good edge rusher. We'll see what he ends up asking for.